There is a certain fascination with tiny, lightweight mouse in the gaming community. But at what point do we call it an unhealthy obsession? Well, I wouldn't know because if you read the title of this video, we're going to make the world's smallest gaming mouse from scratch. We'll design a custom circuit board, prototype various 3D printed bodies, and try out a whole bunch of experiments. But don't let the size fool you because our new mouse is going to be packed with high-end specs. We're talking 4000 Hz polling rate, up to 26,000 DPI, super fast wireless connectivity, and a bunch of other features. So this project is going to be a lot of fun. This project started when one of my subscribers, Transhumaximus, Transhuma made a design suggestion for a tiny gaming mouse as shown here. Now I love the look and the unibody design, but I'm making some core design changes. Here's the skeleton of the lightest mouse prototype that we built in our previous video to help illustrate what our new mouse will look like. First is making the body modular, instead of making a single body like in this picture, so that we can easily swap the left and right holders, as well as the left and right click buttons. This allows us to experiment with different shapes and sizes without needing to redesign the entire circuit board. Second, I won't be adding these arcs on the body because it'll likely need to use additional supports when 3D printing the parts. But damn, these curves do look beautiful. <laughs> Lastly, there's no battery shown in the design. And it makes sense, since it's usually an afterthought. Personally, i just stick it on top of our mouse sensor. Now there's one more thing we need to do, shrinking down the circuit board. If we take a look at the lightest mouse PCB from our previous video, there's a lot of unused space that we can remove. It's free real estate. So that's exactly what I did on the new circuit board, where I basically scrunched everything together and made the PCB much smaller. Now unfortunately, to get it this small, I did have to remove the scroll wheel. Sorry my friend, you will be missed. I'll bring back the scroll wheel in a future video, so make sure to subscribe. Alright, here's a quick overview of the new board. First up is power management. We've got a single chip that can handle battery charging and voltage regulation to power the entire system. We also have a USB connector when we of course need to charge the battery. For the micro switches, I'll be using these white dots blue shell for the left and right clicks. They've been great so far, but let me know if you guys have other recommendations in the comments. Now as for the microcontroller, which is the brain of the system, we have the new NR54 SoC, which has multiple CPU cores with wireless connectivity built in. Some pretty impressive stuff. And finally, we get to the most important part, the mouse sensor. The thing that makes this a gaming mouse and not some crusty $5 office junk. We have the PAW3395 mouse sensor found in many popular gaming mice. You can pause the screen if you want the spec numbers. Alright, so the last thing we need to do is get it manufactured. Well, thanks to today's sponsor, JLC PCB, I was able to get my custom circuit boards with super fast shipping. You guys know I've worked with JLC PCB on a ton of projects, and I still use them regularly even for my full-time job, where we design and build medical and IoT devices. From my experience, they offer some of the best pricing out there, especially if you need to do a lot of rapid prototyping. They also offer advanced PCB manufacturing options at super competitive prices, and if you need a product mass manufactured, you can send your panelized PCB and user assembly services with just a few clicks on their website, but they don't stop at just PCBs. They also provide 3D printing and CNC machining services. But wait, there's more. They also have a free PCB design software called EasyEDA, where you can design a whole circuit board from scratch. So if you want fast and reliable PCB services with great pricing, check out JLC PCB. Link is in the description. Okay, enough talk. You guys know what time it is. Let's get soldering. <laughs> Alright, the circuit board came out great! Let's power it on and see if we can program it. Okay, lights on, no smoke, and programming looks good. We're off to a good start! Now, can we talk to the microcontroller? I mean, not literally, of course. Hey, we've been trying to contact you regarding your car's extended warranty. And the answer is yes! I can access the command line interface. Check it out! I made a custom command called who is just Kim, and if you press enter... Now for the real test. Let's set up a receiver and see if we can move the mouse. And we have movement. But what about the left and right clicks? Well, we're definitely missing the switches, but we can do a quick test by shorting the metal pads with a wire. And of course, I mixed up the left and right switches. I swear this is not a scripted bit for a joke. I seem to have an issue remembering which side is left and which side is right. It's the same mistake for all my past projects. Bruh. Luckily, the mix-up is a simple fix in the firmware. And with that, our world's smallest gaming mouse tricky board is complete. 
The last thing we need is to design and 3D print the body for our gaming mouse. Because uh, using this thing raw with the lens taped on isn't exactly ideal. So I'm taking some heavy inspirations from our previous mouse prototype. We can reuse the front part of the body for the left and right clicks and design a similarly shaped backside but more squished in like this. Same as last time, I've experimented with different shapes and thickness and went through multiple design iterations. After several attempts, I ended up with this, the world's smallest wireless gaming mouse, to the best of my knowledge. One thing you'll notice right away when you hold this is that it forces you into a claw grip. Now personally, I've always been more of a palm grip guy, so this is going to be a bit of a learning curve. Could I just 3D print a version more suited for my palm grip? Yes. Will I? Eventually. One thing I really like about this design is that there's basically zero flex on the backside. I'm pushing as hard as I can, but there's no bending thanks to the screws and supports holding everything in place. Because the last thing you need while playing some intense games is your mouse randomly transforming shapes on you. Now I couldn't help but notice, this kinda looks suspiciously like Nope's gripless mouse. With one major difference being of course, our mouse has grips. Textured Neural Bump 10 grips to be exact. Anyways, if you haven't already, check out Nope's videos. Alright, let's turn this thing on and test drive it. Everything seems to work and feels great using it, but this massive battery is an eyesore. But not only that, it's definitely going to fly off the moment I do any aggressive flicks. But worst of all, it's blocking the Just Kim logo! Jokes aside, I think I have a more elegant solution. I found these two thin batteries that I've wired in parallel, and we can slide them underneath the PCB like this. This way, the 3D printed body secures them in place, the weight is distributed evenly on the left and right sides, and of course, our logo isn't blocked anymore. Alright, I think that's enough building. Let's play some games! First up is Valorant, where I really wanted to test how good my aim is with their new mouse. Getting used to the claw grip took some time, but after a bit of practice, I got the hang of it. Although, I did feel some pain near my wrist area. One thing I noticed early on was that the lift distance felt too short for my liking. That's the point where your mouse stops tracking once it's off the surface. So I increased it in the firmware, and I shaved down the height of the holders, which brought the sensor closer to the desk. Even with the reduction, still no bending, I also tweaked the front button dimension dimensions for better ergonomics and easier presses. After practicing with all the new changes, I was ready to take it into Marvel Rivals to get some wins. My aim felt pretty good, and I don't have any complaints other than still getting used to the claw grip style. This ultra lightweight feel of the mouse is something you have to experience. It seriously feels like I'm holding nothing at all. I played with characters that rely on precise aim, and others that need fast flicks and quick mobility. Overall, this mouse holds up surprisingly well for any scenario. I even got MVP multiple times in ranked games using it. Now I really missed the feeling of my palm grip mouse. So while you weren't looking, I soldered up another PCB and 3D printed this. If you remember from my last video, it's the same body that I made for an earlier prototype. Bruh. Definitely looks a lot cleaner and an upgrade for sure. After testing it on Valorant and playing a few other games, I'm very happy with the results. That said, there is one thing I still miss. The scroll wheel. I usually map it to various keys like melee attack and other abilities. And of course, I scroll a lot when I browse the web. Again, make sure to subscribe when I bring back the scroll wheel in the next video. Anyways, the biggest takeaway here is that the new mouse platform is versatile. You can customize the body to fit any grip style, in the smallest form factor to the biggest, and it has a high performance, low power gaming mouse sensor to handle anything you throw at it. With a few more upgrades and some additional polish, and maybe a proper Windows app, this could actually become a product. Let me know down in the comments if you guys are interested. Now let's take a closer look at some of the specs and trade-offs that were made to build our tiny friend. First, and the most obvious one, was downsizing the battery. The original battery has a capacity of 250 milliamp hour, whereas these smaller ones are 60 milliamp hour each. So with two of these guys, we have a total of 120 milliamp hour capacity, which is less than half of what we started with. But what does this actually mean in terms of battery life? At a sampling rate of 500 hertz, the mouse draws around 11 milliamp on average. So with our 120 milliamp hour capacity, we'll get around 11 hours of battery life. Life. Of course, that number can vary a lot based on other factors, like the power level of the radio transmitter, internal peripherals like ADCs, I2C, UART, etc. in the microcontroller, and any external components of the PCB that are active during use. In a future video, I'll do a proper deep dive analysis using a wide dynamic range current measurement supply, like this P1150, which can measure down to just few microamps. Now here's a trade-off you likely didn't notice in this video. The PCB thickness. I actually got not one, not two, but three different PCB thicknesses to test with. Unsurprisingly, the thinnest one weighed the least, but I actually ended up using the thickest one. Why? Because of this. Yeah, probably not something you want to see during your gaming session. 
Now, we've discussed two major components that affect the weight of our gaming mouse. So how much does our final mouse actually weigh? Well, just over 15 grams, which is actually slightly heavier than our super light mouse from the previous video. To be fair, the new one has four times the battery capacity. Also, I was being lazy and didn't want to spend a lot of time optimizing the body weight of our new mouse. So there's that too. <laughs> Now there's still a ton of specs I need to measure on our new gaming mouse, like DPI accuracy, polling rate, latency, battery life, and more. To do that, I'm planning to build a dedicated test platform this year, a proper testing rig that can measure everything that actually matters. There's a flood of budget gaming mice out there, and many users are complaining about firmware and hardware issues. I want to verify those claims with real data, but more importantly, I want to make sure our mouse lives up to what I've promised, through rigorous testing and measurements. My end goal is to make our mouse platform accessible to everyone, without sacrificing quality or performance. That means using reliable components, writing feature-rich, bug-free firmware, and keeping the cost low enough so anyone can get it. So make sure to subscribe if you want updates on this project. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.